Art Loft is brought to you by... Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. The Miami-Dade County Tourist Development Council, the Miami-Dade County Department of Cultural Affairs, and the Cultural Affairs Council, the Miami-Dade County Mayor, and the Board of County Commissioners, and the Friends of South Florida PBS. Art Loft, it's the pulse of what's happening in our own backyard, as well as a taste of the arts across the United States. In this episode, finding art in community. A textile artist focused on human interaction, a Pompano Beach Arts Residency reborn, and an artist reflecting on community and its impact. A rebirth of Pompano Beach's arts residency at the Bailey Contemporary Arts Center. We meet some of this year's artists and learn how the program is changing lives and attracting a crowd. It's been radical, honestly. It's been amazing to be able to be so connected to the community. I didn't realize exactly how many folks came out to enjoy local culture. I think that's super important. We've lost a lot of that, I think, over the pandemic, so it's nice that it's coming back. My name is Kimberly Ferguson, and I'm a ceramic sculptor. I'm also an artist in residence at the Bailey Contemporary Art Studio. This residency program lasts for nine months, and uh, you're obligated to stay the nine months, and then there's various other obligations like having the Artist of the Month. Uh, you have to be here for Old Town Untapped. You have to do on-site and off-site community engagement events. Um, but residencies are just a thing in the art world, and in a lot of other worlds. Uh, scientists do residencies. Uh, photographers, videographers do residencies. It's um, kind of a way for you to get like a crash course and extend your practice. My name is Gregory Durr. I'm a visual artist. I do the traditional painting and sculpture, but I'll also do things like video, installation, music, calligraphy, textiles, pretty much anything that uh, I feel is a good fit for me at the time, I'll do. We continue to do our monthly untapped event, um, which is by numbers our biggest event. We usually attract from three to 5,000 people the first Friday of every month. My name is Ty Tabian, and I'm the Director of Cultural Affairs for the City of Pompano Beach. I'm very proud of really the Artists in Residence program being revamped. Um, we've brought in new artists and they are all dynamic artists who do fantastic artwork and they're really great people. So they've been wonderful to be on site and um, get to know them and really celebrate them and uh, hopefully provide some professional development to them along the way. This program is dreams come true to me. I just love to be with the other artists. It's very different than like when I was seeing art school. We all established artists already. I also love the program. They pick very different artists. And I love that. Love to see the, what the other artists do and I love the feedback they are giving. My name is Mansi Lu. I'm a multi-medium visual artist. My work is inspired by the beauty of human culture, uh, nature, and the historical object. I also influenced by my Asian culture, uh, also my inner dreams and memories. I like to incorporate um, tile, stone, glass, found objects, especially rusty metal items, and uh, break them apart and then recreate something whole again, uh, reimagined. So it's exciting work and it's never the same twice. I'm Darcy Roberts, I'm a mixed media mosaic artist. 
I'm a resident artist for eight months, and this has been an incredible opportunity. I get to work in this historic building. The sunlight in this building is fantastic. Um, the people here treat us like rock stars, um, but really they just give us space and we bounce ideas off of each other and that's truly the magic of this place because normally we're home alone in our individual spaces and it's very isolating. So the, the fact that we can be here together, we connect and we learn from each other. I, I love the human figure. That was my first love. I, I learned to paint, actually, uh, drawing uh, cartoons and, and superheroes. And um, I guess uh, eventually my love for, for women is what prevails above uh, everything else. For me, it's uh, very important to uh, highlight uh, their, their personalities. More than the beauty, which is obvious, uh, I love to uh, paint these uh, strong characters and, and make an echo to their lives and their careers. My name is Leonardo Montoya. So far, it's been amazing. Um, we are eight of us. Uh, we are all very diverse. We work with different medias, and we even have a dancer among us. So that's, that's good, because we can learn from each other. We share our um, practices and our knowledge. So that's fantastic. I am Shayna L. Woods, and I use dance as a mode of meditation and movement. I believe that we should all rest, that we should all get somewhere and sit down, like our mothers and our aunts and grandmothers taught us to. And I really believe in pushing the audience to reflect on their choices, their decisions, and how they decide to move through life. This is part of the reasons why I have these questions like what do you need in your sanctuary and what brings you joy? So my piece is called The Ritual. It's the journey to thriving. It's a space in my life that I'm still discovering. I thoroughly enjoy the people that I'm co-creating with. Everyone has their own voice and we share ideas. They've shared so many ideas with me of how I could use paint when I create, how I can use uh, mirrors or mosaic work. It inspires me to want to learn how to do it. And to me, that is a major goal. When you influence someone else who may think that, oh, that's not my ministry or my lane, as other people would say, then you've done, a, you've done your job. Our goal is that at the end of this residency, all of the artists are better artists at the conclusion than they were at the beginning of this program. Textile artist and community organizer Michelle Lisa Polisson recently joined the ranks of commissioner artists. Her work focuses on the fabric of our lives, from the nature of human interaction to memory and her ethnic background. I remember one time talking to a Dominican friend because she lived with me and my sister and we're Haitian. And I forget what we were cooking, but she was like, oh, that looks just like this dish. And I was like, makes sense. <laughs> it's the same island. My name is Michelle Lisa Polisane. I am a visual artist and arts organizer based in Miami, Florida. So a lot of my work focuses on my past and history and how I can respond to contemporary issues or contemporary conversations through my work. My project for Commissioner is inspired very heavily by shared meals I've had with my friends and family who are all from different parts of the African diaspora. In sharing these meals, there's this kind of like overview you get of a table that is filled with these staple foods that oftentimes look very similar to each other because they have the same root. And I really wanted to create a project that flattened the diaspora in a way that made it so it was less about the cultural differences that 
are based really just on um, location and more about the things that make us so similar to each other. I appreciate projects like Commissioner because they give me room as an artist to be a little bit more playful about how I produce and how I respond to an inquiry or a prompt. But in this case, Commissioner is very open about what you want to do. And I think it's important to have a collector base that's open to trusting the artist to produce something good. It's hard to believe that Miami's Reginald O'Neill began painting just 11 years ago. Here, Oolite Arts documents O'Neill reflecting on his career and the community that has been one of his greatest influences. My dad is in uh, prison. He's been serving a 25-year sentence for trafficking. He's been there since I was nine years old. Yeah. My dad has ha have always been a part of my life, always in search for my father. In a sense, like I talk to him a lot. You know, that's like my role, dog. Like when I went to go see him in these prisons, and I see all these black men and all these men gen in general, but mostly black men, and just the way the contrast fit with their uniform and their skin tone. It was just, it was just like that play, just like color and theme. It's a lot of black men that are in prison right now that are away from their family, so I'm not unique to that uh, experience. The more I paint and the more I grow, is the more I learn about the condition that has been placed on people like myself and inner city communities and stuff like that on taking the father out of the equation. Just didn't know that that was a, a thing that I could have as a medium to express myself. So it's like people and places and like, all of these things, how they correlate to your own life. I think that I draw the most inspiration from that because these people were doing the very same thing. I think way back then, you know, rather if they were painting kings and queens, it was almost the same thing as like what I'm trying to do in a sense. Like I'm trying to portray a specific place and specific time and specific people. I was, I was freestyling when I was a kid, you know, just like listening to rap music probably or before I could talk. The reason why it's so polarizing and it's so beautiful and, and dynamic is because they're saying stuff that's completely honest. What I'm more drawn to in things that you probably would see is just like, this is my life. And also in hip hop, these are these people's lives. I was born and raised in Overtown in Miami, Florida. And I stayed there for 27 years of my life. The apartment complex where I lived for a very long time is gonna to be torn down. My mom moved out. Like, I, I don't know what it feels like to not have a community in a sense. Um, people who lived in my neighborhood watched me grow up and I watch their kids grow up. And man, the culture there is like really amazing. It gave me like a, a full understanding of what life can be. I've been in residencies before and this is just like different because it's a different setting. Coming from Miami is very different, you know. We didn't grow up playing with snow at all, having snowball fights at all. It's like, I feel like being an artist sometimes could be a bit lonely. And when you're put in a place secluded from every, everybody secluded from their own family and their own day to day, people that will champion you, but also give you a hard time with like what you're working on too, you know, and push you. You need a community. It's very, very important as an artist. That particular piece is just me being in my friend's house and his sister being there washing dishes and me talking to him and me looking at her like while she's like in the back of me and I see her washing dishes in this light and I'm like, I have to paint this. So I went to my aunt's house for my birthday in Jacksonville and everybody goes to see my dad on their own and she had this photo on her like dashboard and I was like, damn, I never see this photo before. He was just like holding my, my little cousin. And so like the way the light was hitting his face and like hitting the blue and all this other stuff, it was like a very beautiful thing. I thought like my dad's stance and the way he like wears his like uniform, it was just like, let me try to get my dad's essence and how big and grandiose he feels to me in a very small painting. 
Clarence is uh, my little brother. That's my youngest brother um, that I just found out about. So I did three paintings of him. I did the first two when I didn't like talk to him in black and white when he was in jail. And then I did another piece of him, which when he got convicted and he got sentenced, um, and that's when he had to like cut all his hair and cut his mustache. And that was just like his first mugshot. Just like getting to know him and talking to him. It's just like, man, I love this dude like already, you know, and for me to see him in that position, it's just like, I see through him being a prisoner and like his crimes and stuff like that. I see Clarence, I see my brother. Just by my father being away, it just allowed me to like grow even closer. You know, as the older I got, the more I started to like search for myself, but also search for him and being able to talk to him. It just allowed our relationship to be like crazy. That's usually my like, what you looking at face? Or like, if I'm looking at something, I usually squint all the time. Like I can't see, but I can see all the time. Potter Lynn Loftus is toiling away in the Florida Keys and putting the literal pair of dice in paradise. I love the, the whimsical sculptures that I work on. I love uh, teapot forms. I just, I like taking play on words and making them into an object. It has some humor to it, makes you think, makes you enjoy it. I'm Lynn Loftus and I'm a professional potter. I've been working in clay for 45 years. I'm here in Marathon, Florida in the beautiful Florida Keys. I do a lot of things that are keys oriented. I do make a cheeseburger in Perro dice, which is sitting in between two big wheel thrown dice. And I'm very technically oriented in my work. I do laugh though and say I haven't been considered seriously as an artist for years since people come in and look at my stuff and start laughing, but I am very technically uh, involved in what I do as well. Life is just a bowl of cherries, which is a thrown bowl, and little clay furniture, little chairs inside. Bowl of cherries. I made a one night stand, which is a little wicker night table with a lamp and ashtray and cocktails on it. Just one night stand, very whimsical. I do primarily throwing on the potter's wheel. I like a combination of the round pieces with hand build. I do teach a lot more hand building and people on the potter's wheel. After so many years, it's really a joy to be able to share it with other people and see them get the passion for it as well. If you're going to throw on the potter's wheel, you definitely need a wheel. Uh, you need your kiln. You can make a lot of the tools that you're using. I sometimes use a potato peeler to get a surface on a, on a pot, a particular pot. Then as you go on, you're gonna need your glazes to do the firing of the pieces too, so that they're complete. Basically, you're placing the clay on a wheel, either a kick wheel or an electric wheel. We use electric wheels here. And then actually start with a little bit of speed and muscle to get the clay perfectly centered and then slow down and then the finesse and just bringing up the, the walls of the pot. The beauty of it is once you start, the clay is reusable. So if you aren't doing good pieces, you can reuse the clay and do it again. So it is good to learn because it's not real expensive to get started. When you're starting with the clay, you're starting with the wet clay. Uh, when you make something, whether it's on the wheel or hand building, then you allow it to dry. It can sometimes be a week or so, depends on the dampness of the clay. Once it dries, then you're gonna put it in the kiln for the first firing, which is called a bisque firing. When it comes out, it'll be fired. Our clay is white when it comes out of the bisque firing. Then it's absorbent, and that's when you start doing your glazing, applying your colors, and then after that, it's fired a second time, and everything comes out with all the pizzazz and the magic. I 
I define myself as a potter, so it's part of who I am at this point in my life. It's just a, a joyful medium to work in. Also, I love playing in the mud. I have never outgrown that. This is like Confucius said, pick a job you love and you never have to work a day in your life. I've been very blessed to pursue a career as a potter. Jazz in the Gardens is back in its 16th year. Miami Gardens hometown event has grown into an international celebration of black music and culture. Among the national and international R&B, neo soul and reggae acts gracing the stages, be on the lookout for La Vie. She'll be on the local stage heating up with hits like this. Here's Queen. So, um, I'm good. How about we go back to my place? Maybe catch a movie or something. Well, this is our first date, so I don't really, I don't really think it's a good idea. First date? Yeah. I'm trying to get to know you. Yeah, but I have a lot of things to do. Some things to take care of. A lot of things to do, huh? A lot of things to take care of, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, how about you take care of that, man? Excuse me? But I need another one. Now. You have a good night. It's fine, though. It's fine, though. This one goes out to my queens, you know what I mean? Like a queen, a queen, pa fem we con sa chérie. If you're gonna love me, how you love me, boy, just make sure you love me right. Because I am a queen, a queen, se pou con pot sa chérie. If you're gonna love me, how you love me, boy, just make sure you love me right. I'm not the kind of girl you can win in one night. Fool me with your lies, oh no, I'm not that type of girl. I'm not the one you call, 3 a.m. in the morning, just because you're lonely, oh no. Baby, you know I ain't in no rush, let's take it slow. If you can't wait, then boy, you got to go. Dealing with me, that's one thing you need to know. Your wine and your dime Take me for a good time Introduce me to your mama Call me when you wanna plan forever It's not just a physical thing Mentally, boy, you have to stimulate You better know I said I'm a lady Oh, baby, boy, you know I ain't in no rush Let's take it slow Sachet 
Art Loft is on Instagram at Art Loft SFL. Tag us in your art adventures. Find full episode segments and more at artloftsfl.org and on YouTube at South Florida PBS. Art Loft is brought to you by Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. The Miami-Dade County Tourist Development Council, the Miami-Dade County Department of Cultural Affairs, and the Cultural Affairs Council, the Miami-Dade County Mayor, and the Board of County Commissioners and the Friends of South Florida PBS.